Hey everybody out there, I'm just touching base with you on some stuff that which we're working on. And the thing that I'm bringing to everyone's attention is in relationship to SAS drives and how to diagnose a SAS drive without having a drive cage. So this is what we are looking at here. We have something I got from Newegg and it uh, if you want to look it up, its part number is... 398291-DD1 and uh, it's a small little uh, SATA if you look there you can see the L brackets on the power edge connectors over to no edge connectors and, uh, that you would see on a SAS disk so with that there's also another version of it which again has no L shaped form connectors and on the back side it has your typical SATA slash power hookup so I'm going to go over these with you and say to you what I, which one I thought was the best and, and explain to you how you can go through doing diagnostics on SAS drives without having to have a full-blown SAS array. Stand by for a second and I'll get this going. Okay, so I'm explaining to you that I'm talking to you as a professional in the IT industry. And this is what we call a SAS disk array. Uh, it'll have at least four to maybe 25 or 24 disk slots and they're SAS way in the back there you see them. So when a drive starts to act up, the very first thing you want to do is get the drive out of the array, remove it, and allow the hot swap to kick in and put in a replacement drive and your storage is operational. But how do you deal with the single hard drive? Well the way to deal with that is to have what we call a step down connection edge that can take SAS, which is this side, and flip it to SATA, which allows you to use cabling, power outputs, and so on, um, and without having to spend a lot of money, which can get costly. Now, <clears throat> does that mean that, hey, I can plug this into a SAS um, <clears throat> interface? Well, yes, they do exist, and this is what one looks like. Uh, on this end, they have what appears to be SATA. If you can look there, you can see the L shape on it on them. But on the other end, you have the true native SAS interface cable, which is very clearly not SATA. But um, on some server, server motherboards, you will be fortunate enough to be able to have SAS SATA controllers on your server motherboards. Now, here's a key detail. Motherboards that, that are used for PCs don't have SAS SATA controllers. They just have SATA controllers. You can hook it all up. It isn't going to work. You have to have a physical card to accomplish this work. And it can be done two different ways. You can do it externally with the external version cabling, or you can do it internal like this connector. And let me pop the cap cable section off and you can see what it looks like. It's very clearly not SATA or SAS. It is a controller interface SAS connection. So, what is the value of doing this? Well, you can work with a, with a unit like this, which has an affixed SATA bridge cable on it, uh, which could go down to a SAS SATA controller that you would put on your motherboard. And again, if you look at it, it's just SATA. Now, SATA is just an easy way to interface. It plugs right in and you're operational. Now, there's a problem with this guy. The problem is this cable. This is the problem I have with it. It does function, but it's... Unfortunately, the failing part of this design is the nature of a, an affixed cable set. There is no way to remove this. It is hardwired into the system. So, I'll show you what that looks like here in a second when you connect it up. But if you look at this guy, he is independent of all forms of cabling. So, I'll show you what these will look like on what, what is a SAS interface, as you can see here, and how they differ from each other. Hold on for just a second. Okay, so as you can see here, we have two SATA interfaces for power, one there and one there. Now they, they're slim enough, or they're undercutting enough, if you look here, so you'll be able to get in even inside a caddy. Now you see that little bit of metal there? That's not good. So you have to take the drive out. But the important thing is to show that they will fit in some of the most difficult solutions with this guy here. Now here we have 
the same strategy, but it's a seam fit. It's the same way on both sides. It's very tight. And if anything happens to the SATA bridge cable, this unit is useless. So that is an, an Achilles heel that we have to be aware of. With this unit, it's a tight fit, but it does work. And the SAS split out SATA interfaces work out really well. So with that being the case, all you have to do is provide power here and your interface lock and you can begin testing the hard drive pretty quickly. But again, remember, take it out of the caddy because these, these RF shields will give you grief and they run the risk of blowing everything out because that metal is exposed. If you look at it here, see it there? That's exposed. That's, a, that's not good. So yeah, I mean, it fits. It's kind of bulky, but it's better than this guy. Um, but at the same point in time, um, the most common mistake with SAS drives is thinking that they'll work on a normal motherboard. If you hook them up, <clears throat> they'll spin a little bit, but that's all they do. And you can't see it, you can't detect it, you can't do anything with it until you have a true SAS HBA controller or better, or a RAID controller that can actually post them. The only trick is the RAID controller has to be SAS for your bridge cable to work. And that's important to understand. So, with that being said, um, this particular adapter, my recommendation is, if you have an old SP5000 series Intel motherboard that uses SATA on the motherboard for the SAS slash SATA, then this is okay to use. Just be kind of careful with it. It's fragile. Um, but a lot of times, those particular motherboards and their power supplies do not have SATA outputs. So you'll need the, chain, the adapter changer to take it from a Molex to a, um, in this case, it's not a Molex, it's just a, a separator, but a Molex to a SATA power connector. And of course, this one is for either. It, does, it can do everything. Easier format, easier to work with, very clear in its description and its roles and responsibilities, how it's done. All in all, I prefer this one over the other one. But I have both because I deal with both, old and new. So that's it for me. A little tidbit on uh, information about how well these tested out. Like I said, this one is really good for all the more modern day G7s and above HP server class you know, platforms like that that people are trying to reuse. You know, get yourself a Dell or an HP HBA controller for a SAS. They run about somewhere between 15 and you know to 50 bucks. Uh, and they'll let you collect these these up and uh, we'll give you plenty of testing capacity. You can do four at a time, but it's definitely easier than doing diagnostics on storage arrays. As you can see over here, I have seven of them. So anyways, that's my uh, two cents worth. If you guys like, please like the video and God bless.